Yeah, my name is Mark Shastro and I'm reporting on behalf of Ammonia21.com from the uh, Ammonia Refrigeration Technology Conference organized here in Orid, Macedonia for the third time now. And uh, today we have a, a, a really great opportunity to interview one of the world's leading experts in ammonia refrigeration, a person called Anders Lindborg, who's been in the refrigeration business now for close to 40 years, I believe. More. More, more. Okay. 45. 45 years. And uh, is now working for a company called Ammonia Partnership AB. It's his own company based in Sweden, uh, giving advice to a number of companies worldwide. So maybe I can hand it over to you now. And uh, maybe if you want, you can explain a little bit more your background to the audience. That, for example, the people that don't necessarily know you. Hmm? Yes, I was. Um leaving university in 1962 and I started with industrial refrigeration from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, a few of my first experiences was to install uh, R22 uh, plants. And I found very soon that the owners who had had ammonia systems were very disappointed with the performance of these systems. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I got really a thought that ammonia was something that you could trust. So it worked. It worked and had potential. And then I came to Frigoscandia and uh, there we had only ammonia systems. Mm -hmm. And I could see the value of them. They were really performing. But you have to look after them. Mm -hmm. You have to educate your people. And by doing so, it was very profitable for, for the organization. Okay. And after my time in Frigoscandia, where I learned most of these things, I have been lucky to continue and give advice to people and being involved in legal matters and in uh, writing codes and standards, that you've has been a part of my job. You've also been involved in different trade associations such as the IIAR in yes. the US. Yes. Uh, Ashray, well, I believe. So, yes, you were among well, yes. Ashray, so yes. You've travelled extensively. Very much. Too yeah. much, perhaps. And you're one of the few that still uh, can say that you know uh, Gustav Lorentzen as well. Yes, I met him still many times and he, he normally would approach me and say, it's, it's very few people who understand ammonia, he said mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've also met some other old profiles in refrigeration which are, he passed away a long time ago. Okay. Interesting people. Thank you. Uh, we, we have a, a number of questions that we want to ask Anders and they're related a lot to safety issues, uh, to codes and standards and also this debate about small and larger systems. Uh, Anders has a, uh, has a few opinions on these issues. So I'll start off now by asking the first one and he presented a paper uh, at, at this uh, at conference uh, yesterday and uh, this paper discusses how ammonia's dangers have been greatly exaggerated and that uh, you, you actually make the argument uh, that reports on ammonia refrigeration leakage incidents tend to focus only on describing the incident's consequences, while the probability of an accident is rarely or never discussed. Maybe you could explain why probabilities are important in giving a clear picture of the refrigerant safety history. Yes, um, risk assessment includes probability for an event during a period and the consequence for this event. And if the probability by experience is very rare, as for fatal accidents in ammonia refrigeration, which is less than two persons per billion inhabitants a year in 15 developed countries, it is uh, actually very much uh, exaggerated. You, you actually, you, you, you yes, yesterday you also mentioned, you compared this with um traffic accidents yes. to give a percentage. So you said two in every billion. Yes, I said now here, two per billion. But traffic accidents in European countries is between five and up to seven persons per 100,000. So that's a, that's a very high number and we do not accept that in society. We mm -hmm. are working hard to reduce traffic accidents in mm -hmm. society. Okay. Are there any estimates of such probabilities in different countries? as well as their trends. This is, a, this is a part that's lacking often. It's difficult to find the information. As a matter of fact, we would have preferred to collect the number of systems in a, in a nation 
and also know the number of releases in a, uh, and their consequences in a nation. And if we have this figure, we could prove that it is a rare event. Mm -hmm. Now, we can't get this information. It's impossible. So I have started instead to find the, the information which is available, and that is fatal accidents in some 15 countries. Okay. And they are trustworthy, in, uh, have investigated uh, only the, these uh, Western countries with trustworthy information uh, for some years now and um, found that we have less than two persons killed per billion inhabitants a year. And this is a fantastic good figure. And it's only related to ammonia refrigeration and not other applications with ammonia. Mm -hmm. And the great problem will be to find information or in developing countries which are not yet using European and US standards because here we have more and more serious accidents. Okay. And they create a, a bad reputation for ammonia refrigeration. Sure, sure. But I mean, they need help. So I mean, that is also part yes. of the role of the, of the industry. And this is a very strong work on this subject right now, from European point and also from the US, to bring these standards uh, in such a way over to other countries in the world that they can understand and use them. Sure. So would you argue that respecting existing safety codes and standards in Europe and the US is sufficient in ensuring safety? Or would you, or would you say that these are, I mean, are they soundly implemented and enforced? I mean, they're, they're related questions, obviously. So first of all, do you think that the standards that are in place are enough? And if yes, uh, are they uh, uh, in, uh, sufficiently enforced? I. I'm absolutely sure that the present standards are based on experience in, in our society and they are of very good quality. And they, you have to understand them and interpret them and use them. Mm -hmm. And they cover most important subjects to avoid incidents in society. And as I said, it's, the problem is to bring this to developing countries. Yeah.